Uh, this first one's called The Serenity of the Scholar, Things I Stole from That Museum. I've been thinking about you since Saturday. You see, I've realized that the heart is not a metaphor, truly, because unlike these dancing paintings that can never quite lock hands and these parks made of a million dots, I'd reach for you and you'd be there. And I am here in this park waiting for you. Still life. I am a still life waiting for you. I am a sleeping gypsy because of you. I bounce from portrait to sculpture to drawing looking for you. I've seen so many naked bodies, so many reclining nudes that I've become uncomfortable permanently and I wait for you to save me. Nothing here makes sense and I realize that I want to be with you because being with you makes no sense. The little girl next to me tells me that art is red, orange, and yellow, and I believe her. I cannot touch Sorry Night, but if I could, I'm sure the night would make sense to me. The men in black tell me I cannot drink in here. Oh, if I could, I'm sure things would come out clearer. Stupid men, don't they know I'm looking for you? Thank you. <laughs> this one is called Poetry Suits You. I'll never write a decent thing when I'm happy, and I'll never love properly or speak fluently, but what I will do is destroy everything. Because poetry suits disaster. Poetry praises the boy who doesn't love you back. Poetry adores the night spent crying because he killed the butterflies in your stomach. Poetry hates you. It's easy to write about the flowers that bloom in our chest that grow around our heart when it's warm outside and the sky is purple. That's easy. But it's hard to kill them. It's hard to stop watering them, stop smelling, stop tending to those flowers and write about the emptiness you're left with. It's hard to write. It's hard to admit you're not happy sometimes, that you let boys who didn't like you hold your hand or sleep with you at night. It's it's hard to be honest. It's hard to suffer. It's hard to explain this aching feeling you have. Maybe it's longing or desire, but you don't understand it, and you're sure you never will, and that's what we write about. We want to hear that poem at 3 a.m. about the shadow on your wall that you love because it can't talk or touch you but just dances effortlessly around the room until the sun comes up and he's gone and you cry because no one's there to tell you why. I want to hear that you don't believe in love but you crave it every day. I want to hear that your heart's too heavy and bones too weak for love. I want you to cry through poetry. I want you to have trouble reading it because your pages are too fucking stained from your fucking tears. I want to hear poetry because poetry suits you. Thank you. Um, this one is called From My Neighbor's Stoop. How silly you are tonight, New York. Everyone looks so small from this stoop. It's not mine, but I make believe. My city, my people. How happy I am when my people get home and smile as they pass by me, noticing my joint that is faded and lightless now. I'm not in Kansas anymore, darling. I'm somewhere different. How I wish I could smoke with you every night, New York. You come out clearer and wiser and more beautiful at this time, at night, with the mist of rain still lingering about the air, and how the street lights shine as great as ever in New York. I love it. How it's just cold enough for me to wear those stupid moccasins I love to hate, and that damn fuzzy scarf in my jacket that reminds me of you, New York, and sit right here on my stoop looking at my town, my city, my people, and smoke you like this joint I wish I could finish, like the high you make me feel. How happy I get when strangers ask to borrow my lighter. People in Kansas, they don't get it. They don't want to get high off you, New York. Getting high is bad, they say. They laugh at me for loving you, so maybe I'm addicted. New York, tell Kansas how great you are. Never mind, I changed my mind, don't brag. Oh, how nice you are, New York, like these people. The news say they bad, New Yorkers, they real bad. I tell my friends I want a place where I can sit on my stoop. The stoop kid's afraid to leave his stoop. Yes, he <laughs> is. It's so nice up here where I can see you, New York. Life is like poetry when I'm with you. Ain't that where we all want to live? In poetry where flowers bloom in our hearts and fire burns like our desires. 
poetry is something, ain't it? Just like you, New York, my teachers say we shouldn't use the word something. Too vague, they say. Explain it, they say. Well, I don't know what something is, but it's majestic and it feels warm like when you get into bed and you reach the perfect point of comfort. Thank you. This is my first one I ever performed in my life. I am homesick for a place I've never been to before. I want to learn more and live the life people have no courage to work for. I am in love with a person I've never met. He's waiting for me by the sunset on a path I haven't crossed yet. I am working on a masterpiece I haven't started on. The words float through my head, ready to be drawn upon the sky at dawn. I danced before I could walk. I sang before I could talk. I was free before I got trapped. I explored before it got mapped. I'm ready before it starts. I'm ready. My thoughts were chained like the windows in my apartment, but I tore them down with my bare hands. I built a sandcastle on the sidewalk to show our people we could bring the beach to the streets, the fallen to their feet, the pressured out of the heat. A wise person once told me there's a life beyond this. There's an undiscovered land on the back of this map. There's, an, there's a passion inside. You just have to unlock this trap. There's a lie behind every fact. I'm ready. I won't stop until I reach a mountain and then I must climb. And once I reach the top, I'll free fall into a valley. I'll lay lazily in a river and let it guide me. I'm ready. If I reach a dead end, I won't stop. I'll transcend. I'm sure we can bend a few rules, my friend. The time is now. The journey begins. This is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm ready. Thank you. Um, this one is called Love in Coney Island. Love found me on a subway destined for Coney Island and love left me like the people after a touch of rain brushed over the beach that day. Love opened the door for me when it was almost too late. Love pride. Love gave me 19 stops to get off. Love built a sandcastle and chased my umbrella when the wind blew it away. Love rubbed off on me like when I touched him with too much sunscreen on. Love flew in the air like the kites and sung like the birds. Love stuck to me like sand did when we wrestled. Love is stupid. It laughs when I dance. It rolls its eyes when I'm silly. Love put an ice cream shop right next to a pizza place because it knows me too well. Love smeared chocolate all over his face and smiled. Love is an idiot. Love is hard, like the boardwalk felt when I tripped on it. Love is thoughtful and brought two water bottles instead of one. Love stays. Love stays when it rains in Coney Island. And what is love? A moment, a hand, a person, or is it nothing? And is nothing everything? What is love? And when will I understand? Is love a ride where I can only come down screaming or soaked or sick? Or is love like the wonder wheel? And if so, am I stuck at the top, feeling and seeing but never in motion? Maybe he'll catch me like that frisbee they throw around. Maybe he'll hold me when I swim. Maybe he'll think I'm as beautiful and as majestic as the sunlight looks when it hits the ocean. Maybe he'll adore me as we adore the sailboats in the distance and the unknown that reaches far beyond what we can see. Maybe the words I write for him in the sand will mean more to him than that stupid sweater I will buy him for Christmas. And maybe, just maybe, I'll believe in love. You know, I think sometimes that if I can write about love, it will find me. Maybe love is a matter of convincing. Maybe love found me on Coney Island, and that's why I left, and that's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> this one is called Teenage Days. What I want, what I really want, 
is a door that doesn't squeak and floors that don't creak when I try to sneak out past my dad's room and out into the humid air of Florida nights. And I want palm trees not to hurt so bad when I punch them because I'm so mad the boy doesn't love me back. And I want bull sharks to go away at night when I decide to jump in the river because it's warm in there and I haven't went for a swim in a while. I want the night to last longer and I want the stars to tell me where to go when I'm looking for you and I want the garage door to be a little quieter so I can take my bike for a ride without waking the house up and I want to live right here on Sand Dollar Lane because the streets are made of sand and little girls and boys with long hair drive their golf carts by me with surfboards. And I want a golf cart because everyone has one except me. And Harrison is fed up with me always stealing his. And I want a roof that's not made of tin because it burns my feet. And I want to sleep here on the roof where I can look down at how the beach hits the ocean because it's a dream. It's a dream world I'm in. And I wonder if I'll ever get anything I want. Thank you. <laughs> this one is called The Hangover Cure. Liquidaria since 1996. How sweet, they named this smoothie the hangover cure. How pathetic, they actually think there is a cure. They actually think everything can be fixed with kale and bee pollen. <laughs> that perhaps if I add the dollar vitamin C powder, my headache will fade away and I will actually be able to resist the urge of barfing every time I see you. <laughs> Is there a cure for my wretched love for you? Some blended drink that will give everything you stole from me back? Like my fucking heart and my time and the ink you stole from my typewriter? I drank your pitiful smoothie and I still feel like shit. Thank you. <laughs> think that our match could be lit again, that getting drunk means getting over you, or that somehow holding his hand would hurt yours like some child warned not to touch the stove but does anyway. But you see, our spark died out when I finished that cigarette I smoked for you. Getting drunk only means I'm drinking about you, and you are gone, so I can't stop your curious mind from disobeying. Now I'll ask only once. Have I gone mad or just mad for you? Thank you. Um, dear lover, your absence has given me writer's block. You are my only muse, my only inspiration. Not sun-spilled rooms that make my eyes flutter or dusk that dances carelessly upon the city. Not even the hateful moon that mocks me, only you. Thank you. And for my last one, I'm just going to read one of my blog posts, because after you're all going to follow me. Thank you. <laughs> um, this one is called uh, Through the Fallen Snow. The day dragged on like the unreachable peak of a yawn, leaving you feeling dissatisfied, frustrated, and frankly, like you're missing out on some internal ecstasy just waiting to be unleashed. A hangover of the senses, where instead of hugging the rims of a porcelain toilet bowl or a trash can, you are desperately searching for the certainty or possibility you thought you knew yesterday. Some days you look through the fallen snow and you see a silver lining, an epiphany of an approaching greatness in your life, but others are different. Some days you put on your bulky snowshoes or rain boots and you realize they don't match what you're wearing or how you're feeling. Dressing appropriately warm for the weather seems more like a chore to you than this preparation, the this preparation of a fashion show the city makes you feel you're in. You walk out into the streets and you find you're lost and through the fallen snow you don't see the poetry of a, beautif of a beautiful thing but rather you see that you've mistaken your location and you must walk another avenue up. But you see we all get over a hangover. The rush of giving up filters through you and you begin to think properly and things don't seem to repulse you anymore. 
But it's when I reach my favorite cobblestone street that makes me feel like I've traveled time. And the smell of my favorite little Italian restaurant on the corner and see the laughing faces of my friends waiting for me through the window that all hope is regained. The world opens up for me and I'm free to dream again. The snow is nothing but the setting of my life in this moment and I am free to be swallowed by it or inspired. Thank you.